Hello, welcome to ATM and with your knowledge. I have come with a wonderful chapter from Physics of Class 10, CBSE. Chapter number 10, Light, Reflection and Refraction. As the name of the chapter, chapter goes, the chapter is all light. Very simple. Before we start the class, I would like to remind you to like the channel, share it maximum, and subscribe the channel. And forget not to enable the bell icon. Well, we go straight into the class. Light. Light is a form of energy. All of us know. Light is a form of energy which helps us to see things, which enables us to see things. We cannot imagine a world without light. We are we would have been really unable to see things around if there was no light. Fortunately for us, we have enough light around. And now, with the simple definition of light, we move to some other things. Some natural phenomena that we see in the universe. The first of them is reflection of light. A reflection of light. Reflection of light is a phenomenon. It's a natural phenomenon in which light bounces back from smooth surfaces. This is one of the behaviors of light. If it falls on a very smooth surface, it reflects. A light reflects from surfaces which are not smooth as well. In these two conditions, in these two cases, the reflection of light happens in two different ways. In this chapter, we'll be uh, studying the reflection of light from a surface which is not rough, which is not plain, but something which is curved in shape. Well, before we go, to check those things, let us see how light reflects from a smooth surface. Here we have we have a mirror. So this is a mirror. This is placed horizontally. I am shading one side of this mirror. This shaded region is a non reflecting surface that means light does not reflect from this side and this side is the upper side is a smooth surface of this mirror or upper surface is the face which is able to reflect light and then let me take a point on the surface let it be a point on the reflecting surface Suppose if you send a ray of light to that particular point, it bounces from this smooth surface. And at this point, we got to think of some, diff um, some important terms with regard to this picture. First of them is a ray which is coming onto the surface of this mirror. A ray which is coming onto the mirror or onto the reflecting surface is called incident ray. Incident ray. Or in short, we can call it incoming ray. So this is a ray which we send onto the surface of this mirror. So we write it incident ray. In short, we can say IR. IR indicates incident ray or the incoming ray. Where does it come to? It comes to the surface. It comes to one point on the surface of this reflecting mirror or reflecting surface. And the point at which, the point at which this light strikes, this ray, light, a ray of light strikes the surface is called point of incidence. Point of incidence. Point of incidence means the point at which the ray of light hits the reflecting surface. 
And now let me draw a perpendicular line, a perpendicular line at that point. It is denoted by means of dotted line. It is a perpendicular line. If you measure the angle here, it is 90 degrees. So this is a perpendicular line. This is an imaginary line. There is no such line over here, but assume that there is a perpendicular line which comes to that point, to the point of incidence. This ray is called normal ray or normal. This is normal. Normal. So normal ray is an imaginary ray or imaginary line which is perpendicular to the reflecting surface and if this beam of light or this ray hits that at this pole an angle is made between the incident ray and the normal ray and this angle is called the angle formed between incident ray and the normal ray is called angle of angle of incidence Angle of incidence from this we must know angle formed between incident ray and a normal ray. We usually write or denote this with the help of angle I. I stands for incidence. So an angle is formed here. Angle I. And now this ray bounces, bounces back. It reflects in such a way. Can it go that way or can it reflect in such a way or this one, which of them could be correct? The correct one will be the line which forms equal angle with the normal ray as the angle of angle formed between incident ray and the normal ray. That means The incident ray and normal ray has, uh, in between them, an angle has been formed. And when it reflects, it reflects in such a way, making an angle over here. That angle is exactly equal to this angle. So this is the angle, this is the line which reflects from the surface. This is the line which reflects from the surface. So we write it a reflected ray. Let us say RR. A reflected ray. An angle is formed between reflected ray and normal ray. Let us denote it with the help of angle R. Reflected ray. That is denoted with the help of angle R. When you measure these two angles, when you measure these two angles, one thing is sure, angle of incidence is definitely equal to angle of reflection. Angle of incidence and angle of reflection are definitely equal. This happens, or these two angles are equal only when the reflection takes place from a smooth and a plane surface. Smooth and plane surface, right? This is a mirror, it is smooth and plane. So that when it hits at one point, an angle is formed between incoming ray or incident ray and a normal. And when it reflects, another angle is formed between the reflected ray and the normal, that is angle R. These two are equal angles. This is one of the laws of angle, I mean one of the laws of reflection of light from a smooth and plain surface. This process is called the reflection of light. Bouncing back of light from a smooth surface is called a reflection of light and the reflection of light obeys two rules, two laws. First one is the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal. You have understood this. And second law. 
So these are the terms with regard to this picture. Second law, the incident ray, normal and the reflected ray, all the three of them can be collected on a plane. All of them uh, fall on a plane. All of them fall on a plane in the sense, you see, I can, this body is actually a plane. I can draw all the three of them on this plane. I have drawn all the three of them on the same plane. Then one question I ask you, if the incident ray reflects from this point towards you, see incident ray, normal ray, and this is how the ray reflects that goes on the surface. If this incident ray reflects this way, from this point, if it comes towards you, can you draw that ray, that ray which comes towards you on this plane? See, this is the reflecting surface. This is the point of incidence. Let us, let me draw the point of incidence. This, I mean, point of incidence. This is a normal ray. I have marked point of incidence here on the board and the normal is also on the board, both of them are on the same plane and I sent an incident ray. Now incident ray is on this plane, normal ray is on this plane, point of incidence is on this plane. And the question which I asked you is, what if this ray, the reflector ray come towards you, can you draw that line on this plane? Impossible. One which comes out of this plane can never be drawn on this plane. In that case, we may, we may have to say a reflected incident ray, normal ray and reflected ray are not on the same plane if it happens such a way. But this is not how the reflection of light takes place. Reflection of light, incident ray is on the same plane, normal is on the same plane, a reflected ray also is on the same plane. So all of them fall on the same plane. These are the two laws of reflection. So first law is the angle of incidence, angle of reflection. Both of them are equal. The second one, incident ray, normal and the reflector ray. All the three of them lie on the same plane. That's all about reflection of light. And now we have to see a plane mirror. A plane mirror. What are the characteristics of the image formed by a plane mirror? We have all a mirror in our house. And we often look in a mirror to see our image in it. All of us spend a little bit of time before a mirror to see our reflection in a mirror. All right, what are the characteristics of your image that you see in a mirror? They are, number one. When you stand in front of a mirror, you see your own image. Your own image. But you, are, you seem to be standing somewhere inside the mirror. You are you seem to be standing somewhere inside the mirror. But do we stand inside the mirror really? No. We are not standing inside the mirror. We, we seem to be, seem to be, the word is very significant here. Seem to be means it's not real. Seem to be means it's not real. Something which is not real, something which seems to be called a virtual image. What you see in the plane mirror is your image and that seems to be standing somewhere inside but it's not actually standing inside. Therefore such a kind of image is called a virtual image. The first one is the image formed by a plane mirror is virtual. It's simply a virtual mirror, image. Second one, lateral inversion. Lateral inversion. 
This is something that we have all experienced. Lateral inversion in the sense, sides appear to be changed. When you look in front of a mirror, our right side looks left and our left hand looks right hand. Our uh, left hand seems to be right hand. Our right hand seems to be left hand. Side change is that too. This is called a lateral inversion. And the third one is size of the object and size of the image are same. If you look in a plane mirror, you can see an image which is of your own size, your own height size and uh, size look same we may write in form same size and the image and object are equidistant i may write image and object are equidistant e q u i D I S T A N T from the mirror. Suppose you stand in front of a mirror. You are standing one meter away from the mirror. And you see the distance, your image is standing somewhere inside. If you are standing one meter away from the mirror, your image may also, your image also. Uh, appears to be standing one meter away from the mirror somewhere inside the mirror. Namal mirror in Urim do Urimitra Dure and Marinikin of the Gil. Mirror and Uli, Nilkana number the image of Urimitra Mirror in Uli Lake Marinikin and Tona. If you go back, if you walk back from the mirror, your image will also walk back. Same distance in the image. Image and object are equidistant. So, virtual image formed by plane mirror and lateral invasion sides seem to be changed and object and image are of the same size and then image and object are equidistant from the mirror. These are the characteristics of an image formed by a plane mirror. Okay. These are the points which you may see on the first pages of this chapter. This is not what we need in this chapter. We need spherical mirrors and reflection of light and refraction of light from spherical mirrors. Spherical mirrors. Spherical mirrors. Spherical mirrors are very simple to understand. Before we deal with spherical mirrors, let us imagine one sphere. Uh, this is a sphere. It's a spherical ball. You know, a sphere has a center point that is somewhere inside here i will tell you it looks a circle it is not a circle it's a sphere when i say the word when i utter the word sphere you imagine a ball a glass ball yan sphere ennu parayumbol ningada manasil verenda figure or glass ball aanu glass aanu aanu kariyam or sphere nu or center most point und that is it it's not a circle, it's a sphere. And now, the interior of the sphere, interior of the inner surface of the sphere is polished. It's very much polished, very well polished. Another wall of polish is here. And then a polish is here. Polish is here. It can reflect light. Abendana, its inner face is polished so that its inner face is able to reflect light. And at the same time, we shall do one thing with its outer surface. Let us make it black or dark. Let us make the outer surface dark. What is the significance of making the outer surface black? 
while painting it black outside we are making the outer surface we are making the outer surface non polished le idu paint cheyidondu nammal endha cheyidirikkana we are making it unable to reflect light appo itharam oru ball ningada manasil kaanuga mugal vasham paint adichu black paint adichu വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നു ഉൾവശം നല്ലപോലെ പോളിഷ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നു അത്തരം ഒരു ബോളിന് ഒരു സെന്റർ ഉണ്ട് വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ദിസ് ഈസ് സെന്റർ വി ഡി നോട്ട് ഇറ്റ് വിത്ത് ദ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദ ലെറ്റർ സി സി സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ ദ സെന്റർ ഓഫ് ദിസ് സ്ഫിയർ ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് ഐ ഗോ ഡു ഈസ് ടു കട്ട് ദിസ് ഫിയർ വിത്ത് എ വെരി ഷാർപ്പ് നൈഫ് ഒരു ഗ്ലാസ് സ്വിയർ കത്തി കൊണ്ട് മുറിക്കാൻ പറ്റിയല്ല എന്ന് എനിക്കറിയാം നിങ്ങൾക്കും അറിയാം പക്ഷെ ഫോർ ദ ടൈം ബിങ് ലെറ്റ് എസ് സേ ഫോർ ദ സേക്ക് ഓഫ് ഗെറ്റിംഗ് സംതിങ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഐ ഹാവ് എ നൈഫ് വിത്ത് വിച്ച് ഐ ക്യാൻ കട്ട് ദിസ് ഫിയർ ഗ്ലാസ് ഫിയർ മുറിക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്ന ഒരു കത്തി എൻ്റെ കയ്യിലുണ്ട് ഞാൻ എന്താ ഇങ്ങനെ മുറിക്കുന്നു ഇവിടെ വെച്ച് മുറിക്കുകയാണ് മുറിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞു ബാക്കി ഭാഗം നമുക്കൊന്ന് മാറ്റിയേക്കാം This is what I have got. Now I am going to ask you. What is the answer? It was a part of a sphere. It was a sphere in the part. Is it? Is it not a sphere? No. It is a sphere. What are the characteristics? First one, it is curved. Second one, it was a part of a sphere the sphere the part ayirunu adu valanjadana le ini it has got a center e reflecting surface ipo oru karyam parayam marunu see the shaded region endayirunu nammal cheyidathu black paint adichu nokkuga adinte artham enda this face cannot reflect light അപ്പോൾ റിഫ്ലക്ട് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുന്ന സൈഡ് ഏതാണ് ദിസ് വാഷർ ദിസ് സൈഡ് ദിസ് സൈഡ് ക്യാൻ റിഫ്ലക്ട് ലൈറ്റ് അപ്പോൾ ഇതിൻ്റെ റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസ് ഇങ്ങോട്ട് ഫേസ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നു സെൻറ്ററിനെ ഫേസ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നു ഇനി ഈ സിക്ക് പറയുന്ന പേരിതാണ് ഇത് പണ്ട് ഇങ്ങനെ വളഞ്ഞു ചുറ്റിയിരുന്ന ഒരു ഭാഗത്തിൻ്റെ സെൻറ്റർ ആയിരുന്നു കേർവ്ഡ് ഭാഗത്തിൻ്റെ സെൻറ്റർ ആയിരുന്നു അപ്പൊ അതിനെ നമ്മൾ വിളിക്കുന്ന പോയിന്റ് സെന്റർ ഓഫ് കർവേച്ചർ എന്താണ് അതിനൊക്കെ കുറച്ച് ടേംസ് നമ്മൾ പിന്നീട് പഠിക്കും സെന്റർ ഓഫ് കർവേച്ചർ ഇനി ഈ റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസിന് ഒരു സെന്റർ ഉണ്ട് ഈ റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസിന് ഒരു സെന്റർ ഉണ്ട് അതിന് വിളിക്കുന്ന പേരാണ് പോൾ പോൾ ഓഫ് ദ മിറർ ഇതാണ് പോൾ ഓഫ് ദ മിറർ ഇനി ഈ മിററിന്റെ പേരെന്താണ് എന്നാണ് ഞാൻ പറയാൻ പോകുന്നത് സോ വി ഹാവ് ഗോട്ട് എ പീസ് ഫ്രം എ സ്ഫിയർ ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ഗോട്ട് എ സെന്റർ ദിസ് സൈഡ് ഈസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസ് ദി അതർ സൈഡ് ഈസ് നോൺ റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസ് ദിസ് റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസ് ഇസ് ഫേസിംഗ് ദ സെന്റർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കേർഡ് ഇൻ വേർഡ് ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് നോക്കിയാൽ സെന്ററിൽ നിൽക്കണം നിങ്ങൾ ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് അങ്ങോട്ട് നോക്കുമ്പോൾ സെന്റർ ഓഫ് കെർവേച്ചറിൽ നിങ്ങൾ നിൽക്കുകയാണ് അവിടെ നിന്ന് അങ്ങോട്ട് നോക്കിയാൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് തോന്നാം the reflecting surface is curved inward a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inward is called a concave mirror definition ipo thane get kittu what is a concave mirror a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inward is called a concave mirror അപ്പോ ഇവിടെ നിന്നാൽ ഇങ്ങനല്ലേ വളഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ഇത് കോൺക്രീറ്റ് മിറർ ആവുമോ എന്ന് ചോദിച്ചാൽ ആൻസർ ഉണ്ട് ദ റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസ് ഇസ് കേർഡ് ഇൻ വേർഡ് ഇവിടെ നിന്നാൽ ഇതല്ല റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസ് മുഴുവൻ ഇവിടെ തന്നെയാണ് അപ്പൊ സെന്റർ ഓഫ് കർവേച്ചറിൽ നമ്മൾ നോക്കുമ്പോൾ കാണുന്ന മിററിന്റെ ഭാഗം കേർഡ് ഇൻ വേർഡ് റിഫ്ലക്ടിംഗ് സർഫസ് ഇസ് കേർഡ് ഇൻ വേർഡ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് എ കോൺക്രീറ്റ് മിറർ ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് നൗ let me explain something more about concave mirror after this we will deal with convex mirror let me draw a bigger image of concave mirror we shall study some important points with regard to 
concave mirror. First of all, this is a mirror, non-reflecting surface, and this is the reflecting surface. I told you it has a center point that is the pole of the mirror, number one, pole. Pole of the mirror is denoted with the letter P. And this concave mirror was a part of a sphere, and sphere has a center that is C. That is called center of curvature. That is the center of curvature. And if you send a straight line through center of curvature and pole of the mirror, a straight line through center of curvature and pole of the mirror, such an imaginary line is called its principal principal axis principal axis so principal axis is a straight line imaginary straight that passes through the center of curvature and the pole of the mirror principal axis and now we know if this is a sphere and it is its center this distance is called the radius radius of a sphere same is the case here this is part of a mirror and this is actually the radius of the sphere this distance radius of the sphere that can be written uh, with the help of capital r radius and then radius we number will the radius of curvature radius of curvature and then the radius cur curvature simply the distance between center of curvature and pole of the mirror the distance between center of curvature and pole of the mirror is called radius of curvature that is denoted with the letter capital R and now you take half of it say this is half of it point to point to point in the focus focus in the number of the we need a vision of focus focus is a point that is roughly midway midway between center of curvature and pole pole in name center of curvature in name a there's a month till point focus focus in bracket principal focus Verum focus on principal focus its main focus so we have uh, seen some five points first one is fall of the mirror fall of the mirror is the center point of the mirror the curved mirror or concave mirror center of curvature center of the sphere of which this mirror is a part next principal axis it's a straight line that passes through the center and pole of the mirror and now radius of curvature radius of radius of curvature is the distance between center of curvature and pole that is denoted with the letter capital r and the focus focus is a point somewhere on uh, somewhere on the radius of curvature that is midway between C and P. Any the distance between F and P, the distance between focus, principal focus and pole of the mirror is called focal length. Focal length of the mirror. We are talking about concave mirror alone. We'll study about convex mirror later. These are the important points with regard to a concave mirror. We have studied concave mirror, principal axis, center of curvature, radius of curvature, pole, and focus, and focal length. Focal length is the distance between focus and pole that is denoted with the letter small f. These are the important terms with regard to con the concave lens.
I mean, sorry, concave mirror. Concave mirror. If I said convex concave lens, yes. Excuse me, it's concave mirror. I'm sure that you have understood only this much. I'm going rather slowly because you got to understand every point with regard to these mirrors. So we need to go slowly. If you go very faster, you may not understand anything. Gradually, we are heading for some numerical questions with regard to this concave mirror. When you deal with con con concave and convex mirrors, I mean, some numerical questions, you got to understand, you should have great idea about each point. Certain things will be negative for concave mirror, something will be positive for convex mirror. And when is it positive and when is it negative? To understand those, these things have to be uh, studied very clearly. I'm sure that you have understood today's class and with its rest of the with the rest of the portion i'll be back in the next video keep watching till we meet next time take care goodbye